medicine. Let's go. What's going on, people? Welcome back to another great episode of Legacy, where it's strictly male and PIP talk. Of course, you got the first two hosts of the most market wheel. What's up, my brother? What is going down today, brother? I just get, I mean, I just, I feel another bulldog in the presence of another bulldog. It's always another bulldog coming. Uh. PIP, please step up. But we got a special guest in the building. <laughs> Who we got today, bro? We ain't never had nobody like this before. Nah, we got, we got an NFL up. We got Las, <laughs> Las Vegas Raiders, Nate Hobbs Jr. in the building. Yes, sir. What's up, Nate? How you doing? Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm just blessed to be here. I'm happy. I appreciate it. Y'all, y'all are doing good. Hey, man. Hey, we, we appreciate you being on. Yes. And a shout out to Carlos Collins. Yes, sir. Who, uh... We got you, Carlos. <laughs> Shout out to him because he actually uh, spurred this yeah. and kind of made it happen. And we definitely want to sh- uh, do a shout out to him. And also, you know, uh, just thank you, Nate. We yeah. know you busy. We know that it's getting to count time and all that kind of stuff. So we definitely want to thank you for joining us for sure, for sure. But, hey, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Nate. Yes. Let us know when did you start playing sports, like your age, and like basically, like what sports did you play as a youngster? Um, the sport I grew up playing and like really liking was basketball. All my uncles, like you said, me, my uncle, he went to the field, and my people on my father's side they played basketball. So that's pretty much what I like to do like when I was that and stuff. But um, I took an interest in football. About fifth grade, well, really like fourth, fifth grade, because all my friends was playing where I was from, and just people I grew up with. So I didn't start playing football until I was in sixth grade, but I played football, basketball, ran track, all that stuff. So I just love sports. Yeah, I, is it true? Hold on. Look, I got a little nugget that, uh, first of all, you know what I'm saying? I knew your dad, rest in peace, Nate. Yeah. Oh, know your know your uncle Chris. He threw me a nugget out there. He said, uh, "You've been in basically into sports since you was like four years old." What me? Watching Sports Center with them and all that kind of stuff, man. That's that's some good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to like to watch sports all the time. Really, like whatever that was on that entertaining me, whether it's cartoons, like whether it was. You feel me? Yeah. Video games, sports, I like the entertainment since I was a little kid. And then um, I think I've been playing basketball since I was like six, seven. And like, I think I started in the YMCA league, but I'm so competitive. I had to get up out of there, I think, because I was, they had rules and I didn't like that. <laughs> hey, Nate, that's nothing he said. He said you was a competitive such and such. So, Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> <laughs> what middle school did you go to, Nate? I went to Johnson. Okay. Johnson Middle School. So did you play basketball and football there or just football? I played basketball until I played basketball and then I played football for the coach. Um, okay. So uh, how long? We, we, we practiced over by Wanda and then um, – I, then my seventh grade year, that's when they had – they started their football team, middle school, Johnson Middle School. That's when they started middle school football, and I joined Johnson's middle school team. And, shit, yeah, I played football and basketball. And <laughs> did it both, and I ran track. So. so, as a Johnson guy, you had opportunities to go to another school. That's, yes, sir. That suit them. That suit they get mad at me because I that suit of Butler. I, oh my God, I'm breaking my neck. Hurt. Yeah, right. yeah I'm like, I don't like saying that. School. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, but okay. I guess uh, the family ties brought you to that bulldog way. You said what? 
I said, did that family, did that family ties bring you to that bulldog way? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you you can say that, but I also knew who was the best in the state, you feel me? I knew who was the best in the city. I saw it with my own, too. But, like, my, my people was in the mail, so that's where I ended up going. So, yeah, you can say it. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I like your answer better. I, think, <laughs> you know what? I, I said I like your answer better. Your answer was pretty much better than the best in the state. I mean, I might have to, like, borrow that uh, something mm. because I, I like that better than my uh, – the Butler uh, thing, so I appreciate that one. Uh, thank you, Nate, for that nugget. So, as we, as you go into mail, uh, did you play varsity your freshman year, or was you uh, solely with uh, freshman? No, no. So I started playing um, freshman. Like my freshman year, I played freshman. Uh, on the freshman squad, I didn't even play JV. I didn't. I did. Our JV team was so good, like they didn't need me. And then our varsity team, like it was just like a lot of freshmen didn't play on varsity. I would. I, I didn't dress. And then my sophomore year, I started dressing varsity, but no, I didn't dress varsity my freshman. Okay. Uh, let me ask you this. So that your freshman year who was the, who was some of the seniors and juniors on that uh, male squad um it was mike and malik malone uh malone yeah a guy named mister um he was number eight he safety we had um who else did we have we had a receiver named avery can't remember his last name that's okay. Um, we had we had some guys that I feel like could really play. I remember my freshman year. They looked like it, I feel like back then it was like another time that that was an era where football in Louisville and Kentucky was great. Like they had a lot of people running around. That was D one. Yes, sir. For yeah, real. You're absolutely right. And so, okay, so sophomore year. You played JV. Did you like play? You played varsity too on uh, sophomore year. So my sophomore year, I dressed on varsity. I played a little bit. A um, couple of people got hurt in front of me. I played slot. I was a slot receiver. I I, I got in um, high school playing offense. I was a running back in the slot. And then my first, I mean my sophomore year, I stopped playing slot and I went to play receiver. But I was like five nine. I was like five nine short, kind of. Um, but I was quick, and it was about two, three older players ahead of me, and then I, I finally got a little chance to play, but I didn't I didn't play a whole lot, but I had flashes where I would make plays. I want to thank you. I want to thank you because, uh, like I said, I'm a former uh, male Bulldog football player myself, and for all the people out there, he just said 5'9", is kind of short. I'm calling the 5'9". So, all right, for all you people who debate about that for y'all self, 5'9 is kind of short. I wasn't fat. <laughs> so, thank you, Nate, on that one. But, uh, <laughs> so, junior year, was you still playing with yeah. people? So, my junior year, I had a growth spurt. I, I, I got to, like, I shot up to, like, six foot, like, 5'8", five, 5'9", five, to six foot. Hey, man, I and I was a little bigger, but I still had all the same skills. I was still fast, quick, and I feel like athletic. So then Coach Wolf, the, the coach, the senior coach at the time, he came to me, and he seen how I, how I had this growth spurt, and I was a good player. And he was like, he thought I was a good player, good enough to switch to go play corner because we had a corner, a senior corner that left my sophomore year. So coming to my junior year, that position, that spot was kind of free. So then he, he asked me to switch, and I was like, ah. And then he was like, you'll start. And I was like, all right, okay. okay. I was like, yeah. I did. <laughs> hey, right, hey. Hey, once a coach put the starter behind it uh, in front of that team, yeah. like, I, I, I got you. <laughs> That was worth something out there at me. Like, you starting, you you a real player. <laughs> but, but, hey, but I just wanted it. And I knew I, I knew I could show what I could do. Like, I don't know. I just threw something different at me. But I knew I could do it. I felt like I believed. Nate, 
let me say this. Let me say this. I've always talked about this. I've talked about this with Mark. I talked about this with coach, coaches, current coaches right now, all this kind of stuff. What you just said right there, because people don't understand, like, you just walked us up to the path, right? You walked us up to the path, freshman. Nah, you know, I played freshman ball. Sophomore year, yeah. I got a little bit. Junior, coach said I could do another position, whatever. I play, start, whatever. People don't understand, like, <clears throat> you're going to go to a school, especially like male, it's going to be other dogs in front of you. you know, Every time. The only people, the only, the only people that get on the field there is dogs. Like you can't not be a dog at that time and play for male, especially on that defense. You, know, you gotta have, you gotta be a dog. It, that's just you gotta be. Yeah, but and I love it because everybody pretty much should be in on it. Like, don't get me wrong, some people can get there, or whatever. But like the the journey we, we're taking with you is a, a bonus for all the kids out there to know. Okay. So, for people who now getting to know Nate's story, so we already know what's going down. We already know that sophomore year, junior year. So, junior year, you switch. How did that pan out for you? Um, so, my junior year, I made the switch, and I was, I was playing defense. I was getting used to it, but they threw me right in the fire, for real. Like, I didn't, I never had, before that, I had never trained at corner. I never had a trainer, period, like athletic trainer. Cause my mom, my mother couldn't afford that. And we was just like, I didn't know about it. I didn't have nobody telling me, pushing me to do that. So I would just go to practice and things like that. So I had to I had to learn how to play corner kind of by myself. Um, and I was going against, but I was going to, that's the thing, I was going against D1 talent off the rip. I was going against a guy like Keon Wakefield. I was going to say Wakefield? Zach, Zach Smith, he's at CMO. He's a dog. Uh, a couple guys who was really fast, like, and quick good with the ball. Thomas Clark. And then I got, like, BK. So, and Ethan Bill, you just keep going. Like, them was all guys who was really good high school players. And I'm just guarding them now on the defensive side of the ball. So, um, they they were they were good. I was I was a competitor, but defense corner, you make one wrong move. That's a catch, that's touchdown. That might be as large. Like so you gotta be disciplined. It's discipline that come with I had to learn the discipline part of the game and really focus and merge that with my athletic ability and be able to use my brain. And once once I started doing that, once I I like you say that dog, like that defense of mode, and I knew who I was, I feel like, and what I could do. I started covering those guys in practice, like the same guys who was like doing me when I first started playing for like Zach. You know, I feel I'm guarding like real D1 guys, and I'm making plays. Okay, so then I'm like, okay, I could do this, I could do this, and then um, I had a good junior year. Um, I, had, I think I had like four picks, and then I, I just made a lot of plays. I didn't realize that I made. I was just out there playing, yeah. really having fun for real. Like I didn't, I didn't really have any like college dreams. I saw like because I didn't see a lot of people making it. I saw guys. The best players I saw was going to Kentucky Wesley and Lindsey Wilson. Like these is really good D one talented players. And they're going to D3 and they did their thing. There's no disrespect. Like D3, college is college. But I, I just felt like they was better than that. Like they got short change doing and they could do better. They was great players. I feel like that could have been real D1 athletes. And went on to go to the NFL, but that was all I was seeing. So, and I just, I, I never seen nobody make it out of Louisville, like that I personally knew. Yeah. So yeah. I wasn't really trying to go. But I got, at the end of my junior year, I got, I had teams hit me up and things like that. Colleges started to notice me, man. Ball State offered me, and I couldn't believe it because I never, I never knew. I didn't think. So Nate, so Nate, check this out, check this out. Uh, right, right. That that whole segment is unbelievable because you're right, especially when you go into a loaded uh, team. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That has a lot of talent, and you know, 
playing with people and like, wait a minute, this dude is top dog, a dog. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? That kind of stuff. So let's go into your senior year. Like you already, you know, you just got offered out of stuff like that. Your senior year, you, you, you're there, man. You know, you, you got it underneath your belt. Do you, let me ask this, let me backtrack real quick. Do you think that because you play, we all know you're a competitor. We, mm-hmm. you know, I, like I said, I told your uncle and everything else, we know you're a competitor. But do you think you playing offense kind of helped you out with all, all that a little bit too? Definitely. Definitely. I think I got, I think I made it to the level I'm at because they just saw like, like I wasn't just like a defensive player. Like, I want to go attack the ball too. I want to make a play. Like, and they saw like once a couple guys graduated, like those guys, like who was, when I was a junior, those guys who were seniors, who was making all play the offense, where they was going, to, they opened up a little bit of room for me to play offense. And they seen what I could do with the ball. I feel like because they knew what I could do when I was younger player, but I was just older. Once they put me on offense, like I felt like that gave me, I felt like that gave me energy to where I go on defense. I'm on, I'm playing both sides. I'm just playing football now, type thing. Okay. So let me ask you: So senior, that confidence is oozing out right now, right? <laughs> yeah, as senior, yeah. as senior, I mean, as, as, as a bulldog player, I'm nah. The, Naked, but as a senior that started junior year, when you come to your senior at Mayo as a football, oh, it's like, dude, nah, I got that. This is this is over with. Yeah. It's a wrap. Yeah. And I feel like at that at that point, I put I started like that's when my junior going on senior. I, that's when I met Carlos, and that's when I started. Cause before I was training. I was training by myself. I looked up because I didn't know anything about a trainer, like I said. Yeah. I, grew up with my, I grew up with my mother. She didn't really know about football, but she did the best she could. She did everything she could for us. So Shout out I to mom. Up. Shout out to mom. Shout out to mom. She did, she's super woman. She made everything happen. She's the reason why I'm here right now, and I love the girl. And she, I got the greatest mom in the world. But anyway, I looked up. I actually looked up how to play corner on YouTube. <laughs> and I started in the backyard and I started doing those drills so that anybody feel like they don't got, you know, enough resources or things like that, take it upon yourself. Sometimes if you, you know what you got to do to make it and put in real work and that it's going to feed you. You reap what you see. All right, Nate, you real quick. It. Nate, real quick. That, that lets me know you a dog because – you YouTube and you're fi- like like you're finding resources to better yourself. Yeah. Hey man, many people don't do that right there because it's easy to say well, I ain't got I don't have money to do all this. You like hey no, no that's, that's not gonna stop me. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, man. So let's get into senior, but that right there, man, that speaks volumes over you, brother, for real. Yeah, I was raised around a lot of a lot of people that's gonna make it happen. A lot of hustle. No matter what, what, which way you hustling, a lot of hustling. Like, that's just going to make it happen. So I, so I knew I had to make something happen because I could. But um, so going into my senior year, I started training a little bit. Training with Carlos. I met Carlos. And shout out to Carlos. That was my first trainer I, I had trained with in high school. He, I was on his, his team, P2P, and we went – we went all over the country along with my high school team doing seven on seven. And we played, I remember Mel, we won the national seven on seven championship. My senior, until my uh my junior year. Like we, we beat good team, like we won. Um, uh, Decaf's team, I don't even know, we played DK, I played DK Metcalf. In that seven on seven challenge that we won, so I faced all type of talent to do like for everywhere, and that just really let me know that. Hey, that I'm sorry. Was, hey brother, I'm team. sorry. I'm sorry, Nate. I'm sorry, Nate. We ain't gonna let that go past. You yeah. said you played against DK. Yes, and, and uh, I played against his team. He was playing. Um, I think it was seven on seven national, seven on seven championship. The Gatorade. I don't know if it was the Gatorade one. It was one of my junior. 
and we played against DK Metcalf team. We had a, I had a, a corner across from me named Michi Holt, and he was one of the best corners I ever seen. He was really tall. He was about five, five, seven, five, eight. I didn't see him give up a whole catch my junior year. I didn't see him give up one catch. It was oh yeah. So like that, that that set the standard, and I fed off that. And so like, and he and I don't think he caught a, a touchdown pass the whole game. Not, 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 not gonna. No, 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 no. First of all, hold on, hold on. I got something real quick because I didn't know this. Yeah, Is today your birthday? Yes, sir. Okay, so happy birthday, happy to, birthday you. to you. Thank you. We did, we want, uh, and I'm gonna say this because we ain't gonna keep you long. We want at least ten more minutes of your time because I know you got some yeah. celebration to do. Just give us ten more minutes. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna get to what we need to nah, be. Yeah, good. Oh, I mean, because you know what I'm saying. Hey, first of all, uh, we're just happy that you're out here, but we definitely want to make sure that you, uh, you know, whatever you got to do is happening. Um, yeah. That nugget you just threw out there is ridiculous, but yes, thank you for throwing yes, it, it out is. there. That's great. But, okay, so so Mel, uh, let, let's let's uh, put a uh, bow on this one. So, senior, you all say you this and all this kind of stuff. How was the recruiting process for you as far as your senior picking and like who was the teams that you uh, decided before before you went to Illinois? Yeah, so my senior year, I don't know, I've had a really good year. I was just playing offense, defense. I, I think I won kick return man of the year in the 6A. And then I had, like, tied a male record, like, six ways to score. I scored all six ways except throwing a touchdown pass. So I, I had a really good year, but honestly, I was just having fun. I wasn't think, I was thinking about trying to go to college, but, like, I just wanted to play like like you said, that high school football is so competitive and it was so competitive in Louisville at the time. I just wanted to play football and go to go go win the championship again. So um that 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 alone that, that I guess that hungry to wanna go win the championship and, and win with my team and maybe play at my best because I knew I was held to that standard. I was one of the best guys on the team. So it was really a team standpoint. For me, but then um, I started getting accolades. I was all state, all, um, first team all state, like kick return, punt return player of the year, things like that. I was getting recognized and noticed. D one teams, who they was they was they were uh, really recruiting me, but it was like um, lower level division, division one, like you know, not nine power five like Ball State. And Georgia State and WKU and um, Charlotte UNC Charlotte schools like that. And I was considering that was that was big for me, like making it making it there. I was I was cool with that. I was gonna go play. That was college football D one. That's all I knew. And I was committed to I was committed to WKU um, with Jeff Brown. Who's that? You was committed, you was committed to them. You okay okay. Yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. I was committed there. I went to that camp. I did good at that camp. I went to Louisville, Kentucky's camp. I, I mean, no, I went to Kentucky's camp, Purdue's camp. I did pretty good, but they never offered me. Uh, wow. Um, uh, wow. No, they didn't offer me. So, <laughs> I, but, uh, yeah, I'm not, yeah, okay. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I go on. But, uh, but anyway, so how did Illinois come about? So I was committed to WKU. Jeff left. He went to he left WKU <clears throat> right when, right before you know um, signing day. So then um, Illinois has started talking to me. Uh, I think through this, through I knew a guy at Illinois. His name was Nate. Uh, I mean, I said Nate. His name was Nate. Nate Shieldhouse. And I knew him from this this place I used to hoop at. I used to hoop at this church, and he was cool. He was like you know, a mentor to me type thing, cause um, he was like a, a, a older guy in my life that I didn't have at the time. So um, he he told me he actually 
play football at Illinois, but I was still like a hooper. I was hooping at that time. <laughs> well, I, wanted, I did both. I did both. And I really wasn't worried about it. And then when he moved, he went back to Illinois. He was a GA a coach. Okay. The quarterback GA. Um, and he was like, if you get – I told him I started playing corner. He was like, if you get so and so, I'm out of make so and so amount of plays, I I say something about it. So I ended up making a lot of plays. And I feel like he never told me, but I feel like back in the day, uh, Litz and them, you know, know who I was and not a little Kentucky because he would be the one recruiting me a lot of the time. And him and uh, the, the, uh, the position coach. Uh, Paul Williams, and then Lovey Smithy ended up coming over to my house wow. um, after they came to play. And my mama, she didn't know, you know, she didn't really know who he was and things. And she looked him up, <laughs> and she was like, "Oh no, 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 we got clean house. We got to, we got to get, we got to be six back clean, fix some big dinner." Cause, like, if you know anything about black mothers, like, yeah, oh yeah, worth value. If somebody worth something. It's coming over, you know how that gets, like yeah. everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a successful oh, black man. She invited my granddaddy over and everything. She's like, I think your grandfather needs to see another successful black man. I was like, Mama, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. And he came over and I felt like, you know, I felt like they really at that point, um, that was like the first Power Five school that really showed interest in me and gave me an offer. So then uh, I felt like the Big Ten was a big chance that, like, a lot of people out front, that just doesn't happen. A lot of people don't go to the Big Ten. So I feel like, and, and that was God. I got to say that's nothing to God. Uh, Great so offer. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of talented guys that I've seen, you know, that could have been in the position I'm in. So I, I, I always try to stay home because I know, you know, this, this at the end, it's all God's plan. But um, I got that. Let me. Ask, I got the opportunity, and I took it. Let me ask you this, uh, Nate. Uh, yeah. Let me ask you this. So, as you get to um, Illinois, like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go through yeah. with you. So, your four years and all that kind of stuff like that. Like so. Did you always still wanted to play DB, or was you still trying to do a little offense? Or I mean, um, well, coming in as a freshman, they said, um, "I, you know, you know, they was talking to me like I told them I play because the offensive coach he liked me at slot too. They, the whole staff seen my, the whole staff had seen my film. I guess like, I had a lot of offensive highlights and return highlights on there too, like." My half of my tape, I feel like it was like offense and some returning. So, like, he liked me. He would always tell me, I think he's a slot, blah, 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 on the visit. But I ended up playing DB because that's what they wanted. And I was cool with that. But I definitely was open to playing offense. And they put me at retirement. And I had a, had a good return season my freshman year when I was starting at the. So, go, but, you know. How much did Lovey have as far as control on your defense? Because we already know, like with Chicago, Tampa, all the kind of stuff, he was he was a monster. So, did he have a lot of say as a head coach with the defense, or did I mean I'm, I'm pretty sure he did? But like, how was that playing underneath his toolage? Oh yeah, of course he, he's the head coach. He's the de any defensive minded coach um, you have who's a head coach, they're gonna be. Heavy defensive guy. I feel like like Bill Belichick and you know, people like that. So I feel like um he 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 played a big role in me being able to be um like know and be a pro and know what an NFL team uh wants of me and how I, how uh, I should act accordingly. I should say. And handle my business as a player on and off the field um, from a professional standpoint. Good stuff. Good stuff. Look, look, and, 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 and actually, like I said, I'm, I'm speed down because it's your birthday. We want you to make sure you celebrate. Okay, so we're, 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 
we fast forward a little bit. Uh, so, senior, you know, I see where you have, you missed some games, but you played some. So, the night of the draft or the draft weekend, how nerve wracking was that? Like for you, like because you have talent. Everybody's seen it. Everybody knows. So, how nerve wracking was? I mean, what was that thought process? How was? How did that play out for you? I wasn't um, nervous at all, actually. Okay. I wasn't nervous until until the fifth round. I really, I really wasn't nervous because I knew my phone was going to ring. I just didn't know who was going to take me. But I wasn't the whole the whole process. Um, I feel like I knew I could only control what I could control, and I and I control what I could control. Um, the whole pre-draft process. I did what I could do. I knew I had to do what I could do. I had to do my part, and that's all I could do. So when it came to the draft, I knew I, I had faith, and um, and I, like I said, I'll be like I like God lead the way. So I, I just felt like I had faith that I was gonna get drafted. It was just about when and where, and just getting drafted by in itself is an accomplishment where I'm from. Like that not happen. I have never, I I have never been in contact with anybody who made it to the NFL, like, um, like on a real relationship basis, like, grew up knowing them or anything like that. I'd never seen it. So, doing that, that was, you know, that was, that was big. So, I was, I was going to do whether I got drafted first or seventh round, but it's just a blessing and it's trying to take advantage of the opportunity. Nate, let me ask you this real quick. How was that call, man? Did you get to talk to Gruden? I mean, how was that call, man? Um, John, John Gruden, Coach, Coach, Coach Gruden called me. And uh, he's just like, Nate. He was like, uh, you had a great interview. Uh, I'm going to make you a Raider. And I, was, man, I, I really didn't know what to say. I, just, I was like, yes, sir. I just kept saying, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think. At that point, I was the most nervous that I was because I was talking. I was actually being drafted. It was a surreal moment. So <laughs> I, uh, I, I just kept saying yes, sir. It, it, but it was great. It was something I'll never forget. Also, uh, I heard in your OTAs or the, the mini camps, the fresh, uh, the rookies. Yeah. Stuff, I heard you've been turn, you turned some heads, man. I, I, I heard that people became believers. I've read a lot of articles and stuff. And they are like, wow, about you, man. They say you had a basically a hell of a uh, mini training camp. Bro. How, how'd you feel you did at the camp? Um, I just took, I feel like I just tried to take the information that was handed to me because, like, every we got a new uh, defensive staff, um, and, and, and the defense is new for everybody, not just me as a rookie, but everybody who's on the team. So I just tried to take the information. And apply it, um, and, and and make as least the least amount of errors that I could, and really just go out there, perform, uh, do my part. Like I said, perform to my best ability, and most of all, try to have fun, cause um, that's what it's that's what it's, that's that's what I'm playing at your best, man. You know, you compete in a butt off, giving it your all, and having fun. So that's what I did, and I felt like uh, the staff was pleased. With how I was, I'm, and I'm gonna try to crank it up even more, not uh, crank it up a notch um, even more when I get to camp, and just try to show my abilities. That's all I got. I got three things I'm gonna get you out with real quick. Three things. Uh, you kind of disappointed the Eagles didn't draft you. <laughs> Don't even answer that. No, you bad. can't. I'm, I'm gonna hit you up. Um, t- make sure you follow us on Twitter, and and I hit you up on a personal <laughs> thing on that. That's a li- that's a little bag. That's a little goodie bag I got. I'm where I'm, I'm, where I'm supposed to be right now. I'm I'm exactly, yep. exactly. But I, I kind of figure out. I heard that you like that green team back in the day, though. Yeah, yeah, that was my squad when I was a kid. When I, ever since Michael Vick and Leshawn McCoy and Deshaun Jackson, I just liked it. It was exciting, and I was a big man, Michael Vick. Fan. Hey, that was my favorite team. Yeah, so, ain't nothing wrong with that. Now, now, now the Raiders is your favorite team. That's all. Yeah, yeah, facts. Now the Raiders is my favorite team. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, two things. Favorite. Two things. First thing, if you could tell a, a youth today 
and I'm not gonna be selfish. Not 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 just a youth at male, or uh, whatever. Going to male. If you can, if you if you can sit there and tell a youth today, uh, a, a couple of pointers to not, and it's not even about making the league because everybody doesn't make the league. Nope. What kind of pointers would you give to the youth today about football and what they, you know, what you think that needs to uh, help them out? You only get out. You, you only get out what you put in. Um, I think nowadays, like you know, we got all this fancy stuff as athletes. Like you, you got access to whatever, so you, you can be on you know, cover of magazines or dressing how you want. Just being a celebrity, I feel like, and I feel like that's what kids get into, which is fine. That's what you work hard for that. So if you do that and you can handle your business, then do that. But it's not about none of that. It's about you put in that hard work, you gonna get that back. So if you wanna go somewhere in life, that don't just pertain to football. That pertains to anything. I feel like I'm as a as a professional football player, that's what I do. Everybody else has a profession. You only gonna get out what you put in to whatever you're doing. Regardless if it's football, regardless if you got a radio show. Regardless, you know, things like that. I'm for sure, I'm pretty sure y'all put in a lot of hard work in it. Yeah. You know, it's all Sunday. So no matter what you're doing, um, find a way. Um, you you tough than you think. You, the last practice is never as bad as you think. It's never as good as you think. So stay level-headed and, and keep competing. Hey, real quick, kind of like for the DBs out there. Give me a give me a, a, a tip for the DBs. Um, patience. Um, somebody who liked me, I was I was really athletic and I like the match movement. But at DB, when you get to the uh, even at the high school level, you can be ahead of the game. When you get to the collegiate level, and you know, pass that um, patience because a lot of receivers they trying to um, they basically trying to make you. Go the opposite way that they're doing. This job creates separation, so you gotta be patient and, and, and really be focused. Last thing, Nate, tell us about this camp you're doing Saturday, brother. Tell us about what's going down. So um, I'm hosting a camp in Louisville, Kentucky, with uh, Graham Farrell, and it's free of charge for uh, grades third to twelfth grade. Um, Free of charge. I just want to see kids, you know, compete, do some positive area. Um, uh, we're gonna have free food um, tomorrow on the 25th. I'm taking 10 kids to um, Sports Academy. That's uh, another um, organization that I've collab collab with for this. And I'm taking the kids to Sports Academy and um, 10 kids. I'm the first kids who attended the camp. Um, they get we, we, they get fifty dollars to spend. Of course, you can't. Yeah. Hey man, hey, that's good stuff. That's beautiful, man. And uh, sure. I, I appreciate I appreciate you, brother, and I appreciate everything you're doing. I love it. Not just because the Bulldog Nation, but I'm gonna tell you what, man. What you just said and a lot of the nuggets you dropped on here, man, has been a wonderful thing. So we appreciate you joining us. And actually, you know, when things settle, we definitely want to have you back on. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, uh, if you got any time after, you know, after the training camp or whatever, anytime you are, I I will get with you and Mark too. We'll send uh, a way that we can interact or whatever, man. But uh, we're proud of you, and I and I and I love what you're doing for the youth. I love that you, not even just what you're doing physically, but just the action speaks a lot, man. And uh, God bless you and everything you do, man, and happy birthday. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, man. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just blessed to be here. I'm just thank God. Yes, sir. Hey, man. And yes, uh, sir. thank you for your you know everything you do, man. And keep on grinding, man, because we know we can't wait to see you, brother. Right. We can't wait to see yes, you. Sir. God bless you, okay? Thank you. I appreciate y'all for having me on. Thank you. you know All right, brother. Legacy.
legacy. Yeah. Mark and wheel locked in on this legacy. Yeah. Get your popcorn, I know you need this medicine. Yeah. Let's go.